Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to give you some tips on using the spot removal tool in Lightroom. Now, of course, the spot removal tool is in the develop module of Lightroom. It's the second tool from the left. And when you open it up, you see it really just consists of three sliders. But there's actually two different brushes that you could use, the clone brush and the heel brush. Now let's talk about the differences between these two brushes. Let's go to clone first. And I'm going to get a brush and you could change the size of the brush, of course, with the slider right here. But you also could change the size of the brush with your bracket keys on your keyboard. Right bracket key larger, left bracket key smaller. And I'm just gonna click right on her face right there and we'll take this part of this overlay and I'll move it over her sweater and just I'll bring down feathering so we can better see what's happening here. Now you could see with the clone brush, it actually copied the tone texture and color from her sweater and placed it on her face. So it actually cloned those pixels from her sweater and just put them right on her face. Now, if we go over to the heel brush and I click there, you'll see that it actually cloned the tone and texture from her sweater, but it's keeping the color from her face. Now, in a real world application, what you'll find is most often the heel brush will probably work best for you. Usually, if you're getting rid of sensor spots, or maybe you got some water on the lens, or maybe there's a garbage on the sidewalk, it just seems that the heel brush just does a better job. Now, by all means, if you're using the heel brush and you're not getting rid of whatever spot you're trying to get rid of, click over to the clone brush and see if that works any better. Now, you probably noticed when I went over the image here, we have an overlay on the image, the tool overlay, and you have some control over that tool overlay. Directly below the image, but above the film strip, there's this little strip of real estate right here. That is called the toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key will toggle the toolbar off and on. And over here at the far left, you'll see tool overlay. And right now I have it set to auto. And what auto means is when I'm over the image, it's on. When I come off the image, it's off. Now you could have it so it's always on. You could have it so that only the selected overlay is on. That means if you have more than one uh, spot removal brush being used on this same image, only the one that is active will be on. And then below that is never. Sometimes you'll want to use never for example, if you're removing blemishes from someone's face and they happen to have two pimples relatively close together, you may find that the overlay will be getting in your way and you won't be able to brush. For example, right now, if I wanted to remove something right here, I'd have to, it's hard to get in there. But if I turn that, um, that overlay off, then I'll be able to get in there and do whatever I need to do. So um, usually I keep mine on auto just like that. And if you want to get rid of um, one of your spot removal um, brush strokes, let's say, and you want to get rid of it, um, just make it active by clicking on it and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now you can see that there is uh, feathering and opacity as well. There are times where you may not want to totally remove uh, something. Maybe they have a mole and just because of the lighting that happened to be in the in the uh, room you were taking the photo and the mole on that person's face looks very prominent. You may not want to totally remove it and you could do that with the opacity slider. Um, and just for, she doesn't have a mole obviously, but let's just say for the sake of argument, um, we'll click on her eye and I'll go over here. So we totally obliterated her eye, but if I want to fade her eye back in, I'll just move that opacity slider and you could see how that could help you lessen something, but not totally remove it. Now let's go to a more real world application. Uh, we'll go to this landscape image here, and you can see that uh, there's a lot of what appears to be sensor spots. That's actually water droplets. As you can probably tell by the way the clouds are and the way the water is, the wind was blowing directly at the camera and some of the water was shooting up and this was a long exposure with an ND filter. So uh, little water droplets hit up here on the screen. Now, something you could do to um, maybe better see and better visualize uh, these spots is down here again on the toolbar, you'll see that there's a little checkbox, 
visualize spots. When you click on that, you'll get this black and white rendition of the image. And you might be able then to better see, visualize any spots you might have. And this works really well on sensor spots, water droplets, and so on. And this little slider here uh, will allow you kind of to adjust the sensitivity of that. So as you could tell by the default or where it was when we started, it wasn't showing all those spots, right? Because you could probably see that there's some more spots in here, a little more faded maybe, and it wasn't showing all of those. But if I turn up the sensitivity, you could see that we could better see them. And you could leave this screen on when you're removing your spots. Uh, you could just, in this case, I'm going to go to the heel tool. I'll keep feathering around 74 and I'll get a brush that is about that size for these uh, spots. Now, I did mention that you could use the bracket keys or that slider over here uh, to adjust the size of the brush. You also, if your mouse has a a wheel in the middle. You could spin that wheel to adjust the size of the brush. Or if you have a Mac computer like I do and you have a magic mouse, you could just drag your finger on the mouse to adjust uh, the uh, size of your, um, your uh, brush itself. Now I have opacity at 69. I have turned that all the way up to totally get rid of that brush. Now one detriment of using this screen is you're not uh, really seeing the real image. So you're not seeing how good of a job the um, heel brush is, in this case, is doing. So you might want to get an idea of where those spots were with the visualized spots, then turn it off when you're actually in here um, getting rid of the spots. Now you can um, just single click like I am to get rid of these spots. If you have something larger you want to get rid of, you can of course paint. So you could just paint like that. And of course, then you could always drag around the sample area and sample from a different area if you think that it's not sampling from somewhere that is perfect. So I could click there and I'm not going to get rid of them all. There's a lot here, but you could get the idea of how we do that. And when you have one active, you could come in and readjust the opacity, uh, the feathering and the size, of course, as well. So you could come in and do these and to make one active, you just could click on one and then that one is going to be active. You can see. So we did those very quickly. Now down here I have some garbage. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see right here there's some garbage right here. So what we could do is try to get rid of that. Now paint on this. See where it samples. Now it didn't sample from a good spot. So I'll move it around and try to get it to blend in a little bit more effectively. So you could see how you could try to get that to work a little better for you. Then you could go over to clone tool, see if that looks any better. In this case, it doesn't matter. I don't think. Looks about the same either way. And um, eh, that's good. When you're done with the, uh, the uh, spot removal tool, just click on it again. In this case, I'll zoom back out. So you could see how you could best utilize the spot removal tool to remove all sorts of things in your image, not just spots. Um, but, you know, in this case, I got rid of some garbage that was uh, down here near the water, got rid of all those spots. Um, typically, the tool works very, very quickly, so it doesn't have a lot of lag. Um, and it's really kind of a thing that you'll probably use in almost every single image when you're working in Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.